Nothing in this podcast or on our website should be construed as medical advice. Consult your healthcare provider for your individual nutritional and medical needs. The information presented is based on our research and is strictly that of the author and not necessarily those of any professional group or other individual. Hi, I'm Sue Becker from Bread Beckers. Welcome to Sue's Healthy Minutes. I'm so excited you've joined me today, and I hope this episode encourages you and allows you to find the answers you have been praying for, for the health of you and your family. Today on Sue's Healthy Minutes, it's time for another It's the Bread Story, and I am super excited to share this testimony with you. My guest today is Jennifer Murray. I spoke with Jennifer after a cooking class at Bread Becker's. I really don't remember all that she shared with me that day, but she left me with an index card with her name and email address written on it. And these words, the one who didn't have to get iron infusions after seven years. I've been carrying this card around in my journal for several months now, waiting for the opportune moment to reach out to Jennifer about sharing her story on my podcast. And today is that day. Jennifer, thank you so much for taking the time out of your day to be my guest on Sue's Healthy Minutes. I always like to begin by asking you to share just a little bit about yourself and how you came to hear about Bread Beckers and Real Bread. I know you've got quite a health journey to share, so you just take it away and just share whatever comes to your mind. (laughs) Thank you, Sue. I'm so excited to be here and share my story. It's truly a testament. Um, So I am from Rockingham. It's a teeny tiny town in North Carolina. Um, And I I grew up with Whole Foods. My mom and dad believed in gardening and uh, my mom stayed home and she, you know, tended to the garden. My dad worked. And so I we were very healthy. I had two sisters. And then it was time for college and um, processed foods came along. Yep. And, <laughs> yep. and my health went downhill. Um, I became anemic. Uh, I was diagnosed with fibromyalgia, Epstein-Barr, the list goes on. Um, and so... Um, Anyhow, uh, B12 deficiency, that was a big one. And they started putting me on all kinds of supplements and things. And iron was was a big problem. Um, My doctor said, Jennifer, you're going to have problems keeping your iron up, which is going to lead to probably blood transfusions later. And I was like, no, no way. (laughs) You know, this year was college. This was when I was in college, and I'm 45 now, Um, so the journey kept on going. Um, I married, actually, my best friend from eighth grade. Uh, I'm going to take it back just a a little bit because it makes sense, because my mother-in-law is the one who introduced me to this wonderful bread, Um, so... My husband and I met in eighth grade. Uh, his stepdad moved to North Carolina in our eighth grade year, and we lived a street over from each other, and we played together every day. And uh, then he he worked with the railroad, and they were transferred again at the end of our eighth grade year. But we vowed that we would be married one day so oh oh my goodness that's a story in itself oh it is (laughs) my parents were in love with brad i know your husband's name is brad too so (laughs) so um so my parents threw him a going away party we they just loved Brad. And um, my mom would say, y'all are going to have the cutest babies. And I'd say, mom, please be quiet. <laughs> and uh, so anyhow, at, and, and his parents loved me. I would go to their house and his mom would tell you I ate a whole jar of pickles one time when I came over. <laughs> um, I, I loved pickles. Anyhow, um, we just... I do, our families loved each other. It was just a match made in heaven. And anyhow, um, we were just soulmates. We really were. And, um, you know, the plan just played out. It really did. So 
Um, sorry, I'm getting off topic, but it's going to uh, make sense. <laughs> no, it's, I love it. I love it. So anyhow, we, um, they had a going away party for Brad and we were sitting on the swing set in the backyard of my parents' house. Um, and we were crying and both of us, I mean, I was devastated that he was leaving and he was too. And uh, he looked at me and said, you're going to be my wife one day. I know we're just best friends, but you're my soulmate. And by the time we're 23, we will be married. Now, I know we need to see other people and do that kind of thing, but save me for last. And I said, I feel the same way. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> so, so we did. We, you know, went to college and uh, he dated and I dated and in college, he called me and he he had broken up with his girlfriend. I had broken up with my boyfriend. It was the same week. And it was like I had dated a guy for three years and he had one for two years. It was the same week we had wow. broken up. And he said, we broke up. I said, we did too. <laughs> oh and so we started dating and uh, the rest is history. He proposed to me on that swing. Um, in my parents' backyard, where he told me we were soulmates, and um, oh, you're yes. about to make me cry. I'm so oh. <laughs> <laughs> <Okay>, go ahead. <laughs> so his mom is my second mom. I love her. I mean, you hear these horror stories about mother-in-laws, but you know, when I came to your class, that's who I was with. I she is, and I'll cry talking about her because I, I truly. I love her. Um, yeah. wow. And she introduced me to the bread. So um, so she gave me, this is how I was introduced to the bread. She, We go on vacation together, and it was in July of 2022, and she had made some of the bread. She would watched your videos about the health benefits, and, I mean, she is a health nut. And um, so anyhow, I tasted the bread and was like, this is delicious. You know, it can't be good for you. <laughs> she was <laughs> like, it is good. Yes. So anyhow, I she's like, you know, my other children aren't really interested. She has two daughters um, and then Brad is her son. And so. Um, she was like, I'm so glad you're interested. And I'm like, I want to know how to make this. And so she was excited. I wanted to do it with her. And she, for my birthday, my birthday was October 18th. And, uh, she looked online and the Bosch mixer was on sale. So she said when she looked, it would be delivered October 18th, which is my birthday. And she oh. said, that was just a God thing. <laughs> so she had to get it. <laughs> and so she delivered, had it delivered. And I mean, I'm blessed to say the least because not many mother-in-laws would give their daughter-in-law that for a birthday present. Very true. Wow. Yeah. So she not only did that, but she gave me all the ingredients. Um, and so I started making the bread. Um, now, I'm going to back up and say I battled with my iron uh, to the point where my doctor called me years before. After I'd had my two children, Brad and I got married. We had two children. I have a we have a daughter who is about to be 21. Oh, my gosh. And oh. <laughs> I know. And a son who is 18. And. The doctor called and she said, are you sitting down? She said, because you need to be, your ferritin is two. And she said, I don't know how you're even working. I've been in the education field for, uh, well, uh, close to 19 years before I resigned. Um, now I'm at home, uh, well, making bread and, <laughs> <laughs> and, and a lot of other stuff I'm making with your recipes, but having fun, um, and, uh, doing my makeup business. But anyhow, uh, so she said, um, you should not be doing anything. Um, you should have no energy. And I, I knew I was tired, but I just 
you know, kept you going. Go on. Moms do that. <laughs> Moms do that. Moms, they don't rest. <laughs> and, uh, when was this that she called and said your baritone is two? This was 2018, I believe. Okay. And so you hadn't started doing the bread yet. This was no, you were still, no. were you still struggling with the Epstein bar and the B12? And oh, yeah, uh, you were still, oh, yeah, you were still yeah. pretty much seeing medical, uh, yes, for these things, yeah, right. But I didn't know how bad the iron was at this point, yeah. So I had not had any infusions at this point. So this is when the iron infusion started, yeah, and um, they were sending me for. A blood transfusion because uh, the the ferritin was low, but my blood, uh, my hemoglobin was six point nine. And you know, when it gets that low, they want you to go ahead and get blood, which I was terrified. I I did not want anybody else's blood, and that sounds silly, I know, but oh, I, don't know. I, I just I, I said, can you put a needle in Brad and you know pump that on over? <laughs> And she said, absolutely not, Jennifer. And she said, y'all aren't the same blood type and that's not how this works. And I said, I just don't, I don't like all that stuff. So I went to the hospital. Uh, somehow it, it was at seven when I got, I got there and I just walked my little tail on out. I'm five foot. And I called her and I said, I'm good. I'm at seven. She said, walk on back in there. I'm not a good patient, by the way. <laughs> and <laughs> not very good either. What do they want it to be? What is normal for our listeners? Um, well, you want it to be above seven, which is still low. But um, when it's above seven, they won't, they won't do a blood transfusion. So I was right at seven. You were right there. Yeah. Yeah. So but my ferritin was so low, I needed iron. Yeah. Um, which ferritin is the iron stores, which carries the iron to your blood cells. And I'm, I don't know that I'm saying all the right medical terms because I'm definitely not in the medical field. Who don't want to be, <laughs> but she said, get back in there. You're going to get an iron push is what it's called, which means they're going to push the iron into your body very fast. Um, and my body was so weak, it could not handle it. And I went into anaphylactic shock. Oh um, yeah, it was, that was one of the scariest things I've been through. And poor Brad, um, it was right after Christmas. He was there with me. And um, all I remember is this sweet little nurse was there with me. And we had gotten to eight. I don't know the if it's cc's or i don't i'm not sure anyway and there there were they had to push 10 and i'm not a passer out or brad passes out all the time but <laughs> I, I i said i'm feeling weird brad i said i'm getting hot and i just don't feel right and he said you're about to pass out and i said I don't, I don't know. And he said, just lay back and relax. Now, this sweet little nurse was there the whole time, and she was like, okay, honey. Well, when I woke up, that sweet little nurse was going, Jennifer! And I was like, whoa, where did the sweet nurse go? <laughs> and and um, there were like 15 people in the room, and that was not, you know, prior to that, it was just me, the nurse, and Brad. Yeah. And and it was white coats everywhere. So I just looked at her and I said, hey, you know, and she said, uh, you know, you're OK. And I just remember this doctor was furious. This one doctor, he said, whoever ordered this, I'm he was so mad. He said, her body is too small for this push and too weak. Never again. I mean, they, he was yelling. <laughs> And I was just like, it's all right. I was trying to calm him down. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> and, and then I said, where's Brad? And it was so funny because, and of all things, he came out and he said, I have you a Hawaiian roll. And <laughs> he was like, you know, I brought you a Hawaiian roll to eat and a Sprite. <laughs> and I'm like, okay. Oh, and uh, so anyways, uh, long story longer, I just, they sent me up 
it's like 30 miles from us um, because we live in a small town. There's not a lot here to the cancer center where they do like chemo and and stuff for a drip, which is like just a longer, you know, iron infusion. Yeah. And so I had to start doing that every year. And it, it was about every six months because I was so low on iron that it, it, it wouldn't hold. It just wouldn't hold. Yeah. yeah. I, um, my B12 was low. Everything, like so many vitamins were just, I was depleted. Um, they found, you know, I wasn't, they were worried that I was like bleeding out somewhere maybe, but that wasn't the case. I just was depleted. Um, I started eating this bread and then one year, in one year of eating this bread, I went back to the doctor. They tested my blood, and my numbers were perfect. Wow. Would and you, I had not it, ha- had to get another infusion. Wow. So you go to the doctor, and you get your blood work done, right? Right. Wow. Yeah. And I mean... Uh, and let me say this too: those infusions, and I mean, for people who have to get them, it it is not a fun process. It really drains you and takes a lot out of you. I mean, I was in. It's it, well for me. I was out for two days. I mean, it would make my chest hurt, my head hurt. It, I felt sick for two days at least. Mm-hmm. Um, not only that, but when you talk about finances, we're talking $3,600 out of pocket. That's after insurance. Wow. Every time. And you were doing this twice a year. That's right. And just, I mean, that's just a small part. Probably you were probably doing other things to treat the other issues as well. Right. Oh yeah. And we're talking medicine all year. We're talking, and I'm, I'm not even, Oh, when I went to your classes, I've been to two of them. I've learned so much. I mean, we've started eating, you know, more whole foods. Now, th- this has been a learning process and a learning curve for us, but um, laying off a lot of the processed foods. But we started kefir and get yeah. this. My husband and I have been on Prolisic for 15 years. <laughs> so we came to your class. And I can't remember when it was. Um, It's been several months ago. I want to say three or four months ago. I came to your holiday class too, which was phenomenal. But so good. I've been. Oh, and we served the keeper. Yes. But when, when I came like three or four months ago, you did too. So I came home, I got the starter, and we started drinking the keeper. We're completely off the prolific. That is so great. We hear this. All the time, people with acid reflux and they're yes, they're just dealing with it, or they're on Prilosec or Nexium or whatever. They start drinking the kefir and it it's gone. How how about how long did you drink the kefir before it, you quit having the problem? Well, I, we stayed on it, and I kind of weaned myself off the Prilosec, but it probably took a maybe a month. Wow. Wow. Well, and 15 years of something and then a month on 15 years and that and I can go down my list of medicines that I came off. I, I was taking B12 supplements 15 years off of that. Um, get this Adderall. I'm ADHD, been diagnosed 15 years off of it. 15 years on it, and now, what, uh, 2022, so not quite, so a year and a half on real bread. Right. All this. No right. more Adderall, no more B12, no more iron infusions, no That's more right. sec. How can someone say they can't afford to do this? Oh, my That's, that's it. I mean, and I, like, I we have a Wednesday night women's group. It's called Wildflowers, and I, I mean, I, I just want to tell everybody about it because it is such a life changing experience. And I mean, this, you know, I say it sounds silly, but it really doesn't. I When I started with my first batch of bread, I prayed over it. It's a spiritual journey. 
and it had it seriously healed my body. Um, and my daughter, she's watched it happen. Um, and when she came to your class, I don't, I don't know if you remember her coming up to you and us talking, but she got very emotional when you said the prayer before you started your class. Yeah. But it's, but yeah, it's because she knows and she's watched it happen. Um, before you know, you started the class. She has watched what it's done. For not just be, me, but my family and my mom um, and e even the digestive system. Um, the other thing that the doctor said is, Jennifer, you're going to have to be on um, Miralax every day. And I was like, this is insane. Are you see? I mean, seriously? Um, no, sir. I, this bread... I, and my mom can attest to uh, she I make her bread and she eats it every day and has n no digestive problems anymore. Um, I do not take Miralax. Um, and I, I think that's the name of it because I don't yeah. buy it anymore. <laughs> yeah, so, you, were, you were taking it as well. Mom. Yes. Yes. So gone. Yeah. Um, and, and I'm very, I mean, go to the bathroom, no problems every day. I mean, sorry if that's TMI, but no, but these are just, I mean, it's something people need to hear. They do. They do. You know? This so, is so amazing. Did they ever find out or diagnose you with anything that was causing such severe anemia? And, and um, did they ever say? They never did. They never did. And, you know, I hate, I hate that. I feel like they just slap on a diagnosis. Here's your medicine. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. Um, but no, they never, they just said, you know, it could be from having two children. It could be, but I had it before children. You yeah. Know, they, they said it could be p your period. Um, but no, yeah. that's, I mean, I, I I think it's important here if, if I pause just a little bit in your story and I have to mention vitamin E. Right. This is not the first testimony we've heard about people that had to get regular um, infusions, you know, because of anemia, severe anemia. And I tell you, vitamin E just absolutely intrigues me. And one of the richest food sources is wheat grains, beans, whole grains and beans, particularly wheat. Um, in fact, so many vitamin E supplements comes, they get it from wheat germ oil. But um, I, so I've, I've spent 30 years studying vitamin E. And so I'm going to try to explain this as simply and briefly as possible as I can. I, I hate to oversimplify, but I don't want to do a whole biochemical <laughs> um, <laughs> lecture here. But Despite a wide variety of symptoms produced by vitamin E deficiencies, vitamin E appears to have really only one function in the body. It's known as an antioxidant. It prevents fatty acids and fat-like substances from being destroyed in the presence of oxygen. We all hear that term antioxidant. Well, that's what it literally means. We're breathing. Our, we need oxygen to live, but we must have that vitamin E circulating in our blood to protect every cell in our body because every cell in our body is made up, the membrane is made up of a fat and protein um, bond. Every cell membrane in our body, so every cell, every internal structure of every cell is made up of this fatty acid protein structure. And every all the connective tissue in our body holds every cell together. I mean, that's how important vitamin E is. And I um, so what happens is when we don't have enough vitamin E, which processed foods that you <laughs> all of a sudden started eating in college, mm -hmm. totally devoid of vitamin E, um, when we're not getting enough, it's just where are we going to fall apart first? So what can happen is if we don't have the vitamin E there protecting our cells, then those cell membranes become weak. Now, it's just a fact of life. All cells die, and then our body naturally produces more to replace that. But here's the thing. If your cells are so weakened that they're dying at a faster rate, 
then they can be produced. So if they're weakened because of a lack of vitamin E and oxidation happening and, and breaking down that cell membrane, if they're dying at a faster rate than they can be replaced, then we have a problem. And in you, most probably what was happening, it was your red blood cells. Mm-hmm. That was your weak link. So if those red blood cells, every second of our life, 10 million red blood cells die, and our bodies replace it with 10 million more. Okay. Mm. But what if that's they're dying because of lack of vitamin E, oxidation is happening, weakened red blood cells, they're dying at a faster rate than can be reproduced and be, you know, replaced. So that means you're gonna be anemic because red blood cells are what carries our iron. And and it's not an iron deficiency. Mm. So that's why. All these transfusions, yes, they pumped you up a little bit, but they didn't correct the problem. Right. So no amount of iron supplementation, no matter how you do it, is going to fix the problem unless you get those red blood cells healthy and strong so they're not dying at a faster rate than you can replace them. So um, that's just, I've just heard it so many times, and it, it just is so fascinating to me that um, this can be the underlying problem it's not always other there's other causes of anemia um but for women a lot yeah you have a monthly cycle you lose blood that's compounding the problem you know so um this is just just such a testimony of god's goodness and the Mm -hmm. perfect provision of whole grains and real uh, fresh and and the thing is wheat is one of the richest food sources of vitamin e if if not the richest but it has to be freshly milled or yes body that's heard my teaching knows that once the flour is you know left whole and intact the grain is storable but once that flour is milled oxidation starts taking place and so vitamin e will be quickly used up so it has to be freshly milled to have all that great vitamin e in there so um, that's just wow that's just fascinating though that they never really gave you a diagnosis so but that's just yeah. a, a little summary really brief i didn't want to like take all the time but now how about your epstein bar and your fibromyalgia and all of that are you still struggling there or, or- yeah, i i feel great i mean i you know i don't ever I, they haven't done any tests on that i don't ask for it yeah <laughs> so, why <laughs> yeah i mean feeling the pain or any of that yeah, so yeah. all of that has gone away yeah, I don't, I mean, so I feel great. I mean, I feel the best I've ever felt. I And like I said, you know, when I sent you a message, I'm going to the gym. I haven't been to a gym <laughs> probably since college. <laughs> but I mean, my energy is back. And it's that there. says, that says a lot too. Because I mean, it hasn't been there. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, you know, so I'm. I'm going to the gym and um, this is only day two, but I'm there. <laughs> so, so, um, so you eat ex- pretty much exclusively. I'm sure you might like get it out or something like that, but you're making all the bread for your family, right? Oh yeah. My, now I'll tell you this, my husband at first, he was like, Oh, I don't know about this. I'm going to still buy my, you know, store-bought bread. We have not bought store-bought bread in a year. And if we get down to, you know, a loaf, he'll open the freezer and he'll go, Jennifer, now you better get in the kitchen (laughs) or get in love. I think you told me that at one of the classes. You were like, yes, you better get, we we need bread. You got to make bread. Yeah. And he loves it. He loves to come in and smell the bread cooking. He gets so excited. But, um, and I'm like, I love making the pita and the um, tzatziki mix. Oh, so good. Um, That's but, one of my husband's favorites too. Oh, so good. But yeah, so I mean, we keep, you know, when I come for the classes, we stock up on the stuff because, you know, we're about six hours from Atlanta. And um, I feel like your weed is the cleanest. <laughs> and really? so, um, you know, we just, we, we try to come to the classes and, and stock up the end. And, um, but yeah, we, I do not buy bread from the grocery store anymore. And, uh, but, and I've tried to, I trade out my sugar 
with the honey granules and super not, you know, we, we yeah. try to make all that transition. Um, so we've really done a big turnaround in our household wow. for sure. In one year and a half after yes. years, 15 years of being on medication and twice a year having these infusions and uh, anaphylactic shock experience and yes and yes. all and miralax and being yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh yes I'm so excited i'm just i'm well, so i'm i'm grateful i really i'm well i'm grateful to my mother-in-law for introducing me to you and for what you're doing your missions um it it changes lives. It's I mean, a, it really changes lives. And that's, that is God. I yeah. mean, that is, that's God. I, I, I mean, you're, you've changed my life, um, you know, physically, financially. It is, it's, it is a spiritual journey. It you is. Know? It and is. I really, you know, I try to keep spreading it. That's what I'm doing every time I make a loaf is I pray over it. I try to give it out, um, yeah. you, you know, uh, and hope it helps somebody too. Yes. Wow. And we've had so many testimonies, especially our wart testimonies. You know, people will say, my neighbor yeah, yeah. a loaf of bread because my I was telling her my child had warts and their warts <laughs> went away, you know. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, you said another thing that now you're going to the gym because you have energy. Yes. You know, so often we think of being healthy as just not being sick. That's right. And, and that's not all it is. No, I mean, not at all. Being healthy is being able to do what God called me to do, not being dependent on medicine. And I'm not saying there's times and places for medicine, that's for sure. But right. but just be having the energy to go to the gym and lead a, a vivacious and energetic yes. lifestyle and not be going, I'm too tired to go do this or I can't do this or I can't do that and I just wow these things must have been nearly debilitating and for oh. you to raise children during all this feeling so I, I, well I, I didn't I didn't realize how tired I was and looking back now I remember going in the one of the last times before I had to start getting infusions I remember going in and the lady was taking my blood and my veins were always hard to find because it was so bad, but she stuck me one time, couldn't get it. And she said, well, honey, let's do the other arm. And it was one of those long benches. And instead of scooting over, I laid down and so she could get my other arm. I laid down on that bench and she said, honey, sit up and slide over here. <laughs> I was like, this is terrible. <laughs> You're like, too tired. Just I was. That's how tired I was, and I did not realize until I was, you know, thinking back. I lay down for her to take my blood. I oh mean, my. that is terrible. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness! Oh gosh, Jennifer, I your story is just amazing. Not <laughs> not just your health journey. I love the. Your, your husband and how y'all <laughs> met. And um, so I just want to really thank you for taking the time out of your day to share your story. And just are there any closing words of encouragement you would like to share with our listeners before we close this out? Yes, I did. Um, I have a Bible that I use every day. It's a journaling Bible. Um it helps me process God's word, um, especially, like I said, I, I do have ADHD. And this Bible is a one-year Bible, so you can you can read it in one year. Um, but it ends each day with Proverbs. And it's so funny, today's message, I thought this was really surreal. Um, so I wanted to just share this, if you don't mind. Oh, I don't mind. And I, it's probably an appointed message. Yes. Okay. So it's Proverbs 420. And it says, my child, pay attention to what I say. Listen carefully to my words. Don't lose sight of them. Let them penetrate deep into your heart, for they bring life to those who find them and healing to their whole body. 
And I thought, oh my gosh, don't ignore this. Um, I'm so grateful for the healing that has taken place in my body. And I have, I have no doubt that um, it's the bread. I have no doubt that um, it was God's plan for this. You know, it was God's plan for my mother-in-law to find you and for for this to all happen. Um, but for people to hear this and um, that they can experience the same results um, if they are suffering from um, iron deficiency or um, anemia, that it's, it's not as hard as they may think it is to find a different route. And it's yeah. not always medicine or and I know sometimes it has to be that way but um, I was told that I would have to get infusions for the rest of my life those were the words I was given and I remember coming home devastated because I dreaded those days yeah with a a passion and um, God is the ultimate healer yes and we've got to pay attention to those words that he gives us yeah and i just i just wanted to end with those words i just thought that was that was amazing for today (laughs) yes would you read them one more time before i close i will so it's proverbs 4 20 my child pay attention to what i say listen carefully to my words Don't lose sight of them. Let them penetrate deep into your heart, for they bring life to those who find them and healing to their whole body. Wow. Well, your testimony has encouraged me, and I know it has encouraged all of the listeners today. I just continue to be amazed at the health benefits of whole grains and real bread made from freshly milled flour. It doesn't surprise me, but it continues to amaze me and encourages me to go on. This is our 32nd year in business, and I'm more excited today than I was 32 years ago when we started. So I just want to thank you, Jennifer, again. And um, as always, thank everyone for listening today. Until next time, this is Sue Becker from Bread Beckers with Sue's Healthy Minutes. Sue's Healthy Minutes podcast has been a presentation by the Breadbeckers Incorporated located in Woodstock, Georgia. For more information, store hours, and learning opportunities, visit breadbeckers.com and follow us on Facebook and Instagram. Make sure to subscribe to this podcast and never miss an episode. Share this with two friends who would benefit from this information and be sure to join us again next week for more of Sue's Healthy Minutes.